During the reprogramming of somatic cells into iPSCs, the colonies generated should be assessed to check for the expression of pluripotency markers. Live staining is a method commonly used for early confirmation of these markers, which indicates successful reprogramming. In this video, we will demonstrate how to confirm the expression of TRA160, a key pluripotent stem cell marker. This process aims to confirm expression as opposed to identifying specific areas of expression within the iPSC colonies. There is no need to fix the cells prior to staining, and you can continue to culture the cells after staining, since there are no cytotoxic reagents involved. Before you begin the antibody staining, check that you have some iPSC colonies present on your culture plate. Here we have an example of an ideal iPSC colony, which is reasonably big and round with smooth edges. This will be good for colony picking and for live staining. Surrounding the colony, there are many mouse embryonic fibroblasts, or MEFs. This second example has more colonies, but they are much smaller. The edges are less defined and they are quite close together, which would make colony picking more difficult. To begin the live staining process, the first step is to centrifuge the dyed conjugated antibodies for two minutes at 2000 RCF. This is important to minimize the transfer of protein aggregates that may have formed during storage, which could potentially lead to non-specific background staining. Next, aspirate the spent media and replace with fresh media. Then add 20 microliters of each antibody, TRA160 and CD44, directly into each well. Gently agitate the plate to ensure even distribution of antibodies. Then transfer the plate to a 37 degree incubator and incubate for 30 minutes. Once the incubation is complete, we perform a wash step. Aspirate the media and add 2 ml of fluorobrite DMEM per well. Agitate the plate, then aspirate the DMEM and repeat this wash step twice. Aspirate off the final wash, then add 2 ml of fluorobrite DMEM. The cells are now ready to be observed using a fluorescent microscope. This should ideally be done within 30 minutes to ensure optimal fluorescence. The first antibody we are checking here is the TRA160, the iPSC marker. The 
adjust the exposure and gain so that you can clearly see the IPS cells. Take care when doing this to avoid oversaturating the image. Once you are happy with the saturation and exposure levels, capture an image. Then check the GFP channel for the CD44 antibody. Using the same settings, this channel is very bright, so adjust the gain and exposure settings. This antibody should stay in the MEFs, but not the IPSC colony. Once you are happy with it, capture the image. Depending on the capabilities of the microscope, you may be able to view both channels at the same time. This is quite helpful for ensuring that you are viewing the exact same area of the well for both channels, and you can compare the two types of staining directly. You can see that none of the MEFs have stained for TRA160. Here we can also see the edges of two other IPSC colonies, as well as the main one that we focused on. Once you are happy with the settings for both channels, you can merge the images together to create a single image. You can now assess from this image how well your reprogramming has worked, and the presence of TRA160 staining here indicates that it has been successful. You may also want to go back and adjust the settings further, as in this case, the CD44 staining is a little bit oversaturated in comparison with the TRA160 staining. It is also possible for the IPSCs to grow over the top of the MEF cells, so there may be some overlap between the red and green staining. If you are finding that there is no fluorescence or a very weak signal, Firstly, check that the kit that you're using is in date. Kits that have been frozen or exposed to light or left outside of the fridge for a long time may not be effective. You can then try increasing the exposure time and see if this increases the signal, but make sure to confirm that the fluorescence that you see is true signal and not background signal. You can then try increasing the concentration of antibody. If, on the other hand, the fluorescence you see is non-specific or all over the plate, this is likely background signal. Try decreasing the exposure time to see if the signal becomes more specific in its expression. Also ensure that the media is changed before adding the antibody and that several washes have been performed after the incubation. This will help to remove debris that may be the cause of the aberrant signal. You can also try decreasing the concentration of antibody.